Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Good morning, guys. Good morning. It's like, you're up. And I was like, that's a country. Actually, it's a continent, right? <laughs> so, anyway, I know what. This is a rock group, too, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah? So, anyway, I'm going to get my age here. What are you saying? Which is young, right? By the way, I feel like I'm in my prime. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace and your peace that passes all understanding and that you're faithful, that you're so faithful and so true and so just. And we just give you the praise for that. Father, we just thank you for a comfort this morning for the folks that need the comfort and for healing for the folks that are out there that need the healing and and provision for the folks out here out there who are needing provision and just let them know that you're not just with them but you're in them and that you're working inside out making a way and and talking to them in ways they never dreamed and so we thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus amen, amen. so um, I could, this time of year always brings me, um, by the way, anybody, everybody have a good Christmas? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I had a good Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> so like I'm being, being Jewish, we get more than one New Year. <laughs> Technically I get three of them. So it's like I went to bed early. Like I didn't even stay up, you know? And so, and then. Of course, you got football, and then, of course, the church, too, and all the stuff going on, which was rare for Christmas and New Year's to fall in, you know. But anyway, um, I feel refreshed and feel good, and I'm ready to rock and roll for this year. So I uh, met my new friend, Shane. He looks like another guy I used to know, too, you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, really, really great to be back and be in the saddle and be rolling. Um, this time of year's Today's a great day for me because my son was born on this day, and I love him, and he's a dad now. This is his first, this is his first um, birthday with, with his son, and um, so I'm excited for him, but it's also hard for me to believe because I still remember that little, that little baby. I'm like, how in the world did, did he grow up so much? and so fast and so I, I think about him but then I also think it was um, in, in um, yesterday it'd be one seven seventeen when my mom passed and so I think about this day I think about my mom a lot too and so I think a lot about numbers and so I see numbers and, and, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that because the Hebrew is alphanumeric you guys understand it? Like that means that, that every letter represents a number and every number <laughs> represents a picture. They have pictures and letters and numbers and all of it means something. That's why like you could spend an eternity diving into this and God would always be revealing himself in a new way. He's in all things, right? And in him all things were created. So like, you know, he's in this, like without him, this wouldn't exist. Without him, this wouldn't exist, right? Without him, the chair or the moon or the stars. So I was just driving down, and I was looking, like, yeah, you're in everything. The master's in everything. There's a cowboy song called The Master's in Everything. And I used to think, oh, yeah, right, he's in everything. But he really is. Like, I was watching two dogs walk, oh, yeah, you're there, and you're there, and you're there, and you're in that street, you're in that post, like, you're everywhere. And all of a sudden, you go from feeling alone to realizing that you're not alone because he's everywhere and in everything. And that's how big our God is. And so, but I was thinking about my mom and she passed on 1717, which was 1717. <laughs> and so in Hebrew, that represents overcoming, right? Overcoming death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, it was bittersweet, but when I look back on that, I think, you know what, God, you have a purpose and you have a plan and you talk to us and 
all different ways. And even when she passed, she brought resurrection into our lives in certain ways that wouldn't have happened without, without that. And so God's always working in things, and we don't always see it. Sometimes we don't always feel it, but it doesn't matter. God's word's not true because you feel like it is. God's not true because you look at it and see it's true. God's word is true before you see it's true. God's word is true before you feel it's true, right? God's true before you believe it to be true. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. It does not make what he, who he is or what he's done any less than it really is, right? Your faith isn't what makes God. Your faith is coming into agreement with what God has already done. And that's a big difference, right? Instead of trying to get our faith to move God, we're moving in faith with God, to God, and from God. And that, that's where we set ourselves up to live. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our doing. Being. Our what? Being. Being. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Being. Oh, well, I got that wrong because I thought it was doing. Right. What is it? It's about being. You know that, that you are a human being, right? And we focus so much on the doing that we forget that we're beings. Remember the two sisters? One sat at Jesus' feet and the other was busy. She was washing dishes and, and, and you know, vacuuming the floor and, you know, trying to make sure everything's all, all perfect and I got to do this for Jesus, and I got to do that for Jesus. And, and then she gets mad at her sister because she's just chilling out with Jesus. And Jesus says, look, she's chosen a better thing. Wait a second, but I'm doing this for you. I'm doing that for you. Shouldn't, shouldn't that get more attention than just being with me? So she was a human. She thought she was a human doing. And the other sister's like, you know, I, I'm a human being. I'm just going to be. I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to walk with you, and I'm going to talk with you. The Bible says he, he's, uh, he's our future help in time of trouble. No? Ever what? Ever present help in time of trouble. It's one thing to say, like, like, like I'm around rodeo cowboys and around cowboys, and like you get in trouble in a round pen with a horse, those cowboys are off, and they're out there going to you. You see someone, uh, someone hang up on a bull. Those guys are going to get them. It's the rodeo clown says, well, I'll be there next week. <laughs> you know, that's not good news. That's not gospel, right? Especially when you're the one, well, I won't be here next week, yeah. right? If you don't show up right here right now, guess what? I won't be here next week. It's really important that... I have this present help. That's what the gospel is. God with us. Emmanuel. Right? What does it mean? Hey, I'm here. I got you. Ever get in trouble and you're, or something's going on, someone comes up and says, hey, I'm with you. I got you. Just seen that at the football game where that young man collapsed. And mm -hmm. like Will was telling me he died, actually literally died on the on the field and they brought him back, right? And um, it's quite a testimony, but everybody's praying. Before they were making fun of Tim Tebow because he was, they call it Tebowing, right? That was before, before Lincoln Riley left and they gave him a bad nickname called Tebow, which I ain't gonna repeat what that means, but it's an acronym. He's a Oklahoma Sooner coach, but anyway, he took off. But Tim Tebow would bow and pray and they'd make fun of him and now everyone in that stadium was praying. They didn't even finish the game. What is happening? They're breaking down on ESPN and, and the announcers following the Holy Spirit and praying. Last night before the football game, both teams met in the middle. And you know what they did? They prayed. Tim Tebow did it when it wasn't cool. Now it's cool. Like, like that song, I Was Country, When Country Wasn't Cool. Tim D was like, I was praying when praying wasn't cool. Now it's cool. And you know what? God moved. God showed off. And how powerful of a testimony is that? That's got to do something in people's hearts to know. 
you know what? He's with us. He's here. And even though we've gone this far, and even though we've rejected God, and even though we've not allowed prayer, we know that when we still really need Him, we can go to Him and He's there. What a testimony that is. Think about that. Like they were, they, they'd bow their knees for other things, but they wouldn't bow their knee to pray. And now everyone is bowing their knee and saying, you know what, Father, help this, do this, do that. And you know what, when they see the fruit of this in this, it's going to change everything around. And I think God's doing something. To me, it was a sign that, that God's breathing life in, into not just um, me, but into this entire country and into this nation. And I, I really believe that we need it. And what a greater picture of it than what we're seeing right now. Kid wakes up after dying twice in a coma. First thing he asks, who won the game? <laughs> like, son, they didn't finish that game. That's how important you are. What does that got to say to him? That's how valuable that young man is. This whole country was praying for him. Pretty powerful. There's still hope. There's still hope for us, man. Still hope for our country. Still hope for human beings, not human doings, right? And so, but I think about that. In him we live and move and have our, our being. It's who we are. Like, you take all this stuff away, and we still are, right? It's like, I get my cars out there, my truck. When you see my truck, you see it driving on the road. That's James, and at least you hope it's me in it, and someone didn't steal it, <laughs> right? Well, there's James. Look, he's going down the road. Then when I park the car and go somewhere else, you don't go, oh, well, there's James sitting out there. Why? Because, like, I'm not my car. Like, my car's my vehicle where I drive and I get places, but I'm not my truck. I'm me, right? Same thing with our bodies. Same thing with, with we, we, our bodies are our vehicles, but we live forever. And that's good news for us, right? Good news, especially when I think about my mom. Good news when... And think about Charles's brother. Good news when we can think about things going on around us. There's hope. And there's something more than just what we can see, hear, feel, taste, touch, and smell. And it's way bigger than that. So I was thinking that, you know, those numbers matter, but we're coming in the year 2023. And every time I hear 23, everyone talks about, like, like they think about, What? Michael Jordan, I think about Michael Jordan too. But every time I hear about it, everyone takes me to the 23rd Psalms. And you know, when you, when you go to most funerals, you know what they're, they're reading? The 23rd Psalms. And everybody thinks it's about death. But it's not. It's not about death. It's about life. It's about victory. It's about walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And knowing that we have victory in the midst of all that stuff. It's not about, it's not about death. It's about life. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have life in little bitty increments as long as you do good. <laughs> no? No? I've come that you may have life and have it in cereal only. <laughs> but Mikey's got to like it. Right? That's an old one, if you guys remember that one, right? No, I've come that you may have life, and life more abundantly. It's like, like, not just like, he's like, I'm just not giving you a little. When he was at Lazarus' tomb, he walked up to Lazarus' tomb, and, and, and he cried, right? And like, Jesus, if you could just do this, my, if my, my brother, the same ones we're talking about, what the doer and the being didn't believe him. And none of the people around, and that's the only time it wept. And I think part of it was because they didn't realize who he was. They saw a man who people were being healed, who knew the word and who had knowledge and all this, 
but they didn't really see him. Do you ever walk through lives like that, feeling like that? Like, you know, you see this out here and you're like, wow, Pastor James is so good looking. <laughs> I mean, whoo. And if that's all you see, like you really haven't seen nothing until you really see the real me who's inside. You think this is good looking. Woo. <laughs> Here's the thing. One of my mentors always said that we are made in the image of God, but the thing we do is we always try to make God in our image instead of realizing that he has made us in his image. And if we realize that, then we can step into it. But here Jesus is, and, and he's standing there. If you would have only been here. Anybody, am I the only one who's ever said that? Ever felt like that? Well, you're too late. This is done. He, he's a not on time God. He wrote songs about it. He's a not on time. Yes, he isn't. <laughs> Did you sing that song? No. no. Oh, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is, right? Sometimes we're like, well, he's late. They thought he was late. If you'd only done this like I told you to, what are they doing? They're trying to make God in their image and in their thought process rather than trusting him to do what he does. You don't know how he's going to do it. He said I'd be there. He's just sleeping. He didn't tell him how, but he said he'd do it. We worry about the how, and he's like, don't worry about the how, just worry about focusing on me and being, and I'll work the how out. Here they're looking at him, and he's like, they just think I'm common. Like, I've walked with them, I've talked with them, and they really don't even know who I am. John got it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. In him all things exist. John got it. But here's all these other people didn't. You know what he said? I'm out of here, boys. Good luck. I like Lazarus, but Mary, go back to her. Martha, go back to work. Mary or Martha, I don't remember which one's which. I always mix them up. They should name them with different letters and M's. <laughs> Taking off, man. I'm out of here, right? No, he wept. Do you know what he said? I am the resurrection, and the life. Like, you don't need, you don't need anything but me. All I have to do is say one word, and all those things that look dead in your life, they'll come to, come to life. The Bible says, says that he's a God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. What's he calling? What's he saying? He's like, you call that dead. But I'm saying a life to that situation. Life to what's going on. And it comes not, not through our doing, but through being in, with him, with him being in us and working through us. And in him, we live and move and have our being. We're one. I mean, this picture of my son, and he's hold, holding his son, and he's just looking at him. They're looking at each other. And his face is just glowing, and you can just see how proud he is and how much he loves him. And you can see the baby's just like, oh, wow, I can feel the love, and I can feel this. And, and it may, makes, reminds me of the, the um, Aaronic blessing, which is a blessing of Aaron to the Jewish people. Shalom. I butchered it a little. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. You know what that is? That's like a father looking at a baby and glowing and the face is shining with love and with, wow, look at you. You want to know how God looks at you? That's how he looks at you. And if he didn't, the cross made no difference. If he didn't, he never would have sent his son. 
If he didn't, we never would have had Christmas. We never would have had God with us. We never would have made us. He's like, I'll make my face to shine upon you. He loves you unconditionally, just like you are. And you can count on him. So it says, he said, I am the resurrection. And so it starts out in Psalms 23. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, what is that? The Lord there. What is that? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. What, what does that mean? Uh, Yahweh. Yahweh, right? yud Hey vav Hey. Do you know what yud Hey vav Hey means? I am. I am. I am that I am. You know what he's saying? That I am that I am is your shepherd. You know, there's donkeys that talk in the Bible. Like Disney thought they had, had, had it. But like he's just copying from God because like he got Balaam and his donkey and, you know, and then Jim has donkeys and things that talk too, little toys he makes talk, you know, <laughs> right? But him and God are kind of on the same page there, right? But in Disney, all, all kind. Like Danny, Disney has all these talking animals and seeing things from certain perspectives, but God was the first to that. Got Balaam's donkey, man, talking to him, right? And so for one time you get to see something through the perspective of an animal. Now we're getting to Psalms 23, and he said, talking from the perspective of what? Of a sheep. I went and done a horse for one of my um, customers the other day, and they adopted this little baby lamb. And, and that sucker's running around with their corgi and bounces around like a dog. And, and, it, and I was like, what do you think of it? She goes, she's so lovely, and she's so cute, but she's dumb. <laughs> she's dumb. Like she is. She's cute. It's like she's following her um, all around. It's like she's got her little lamb. Her name is not Mary, but she's got a little lamb. And everywhere that she goes, that lamb's sure to go. Like she went in the freezer and gave me, uh, they, go, they hunt. And so I was like, I've never had bear. So they gave me a little bit of bear. And so, so um, we go in the freezer. She's digging in the freezer where all the meat is. And that lamb's just sitting there, I trust you. I'm like, dude, you're going to be in there eventually. I know where they are, but still you're trusting her. Run! Run for your life, right? You see all this meat in here? But no. She's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> well, fear no evil. Why? Because she knows. She's loved. And she has a trust. She's a lamb. She's dumb. But she trusts and she'll go wherever she goes. It, it's what the shepherds were talking about. They lived with they, these sheep. They had a relationship with these sheep. These, these sheep weren't too wise on the way everything worked. But they knew as long as they stuck with their shepherd that they'd be okay. They knew if the lion and the bear came, guess what? They'd be okay because the shepherd would go out and they would, man, he'd kill it. If it was David anyway, right? They, they knew that protecting them was just, just the opportunity to prepare the shepherd for giants. And you think about that. So here, this little lamb is just bouncing around. It's so cute, but you can't pet its head. It don't like its head being touched. But it's so soft and cuddly, it feels like a sweater. <laughs> and it's just so cute. And it made me think about the Lord being a shepherd. Like he's like, God, boy, I blew that. And he's like, I know you're a sheep, you're dumb. It's like, boy, you're dumb. You ever feel like you're dumb sometimes? Man, God, I never saw that. And he's like, well, you're a sheep. I get it. Like, he says, I'm going to take you from being a sheep to being a son. I'm going to take you from one level to another level and watch what I will do. Now, they think sheep are dumb, but what if the sheep really isn't dumb? Because that sheep gets anything it wants. I don't think the sheep's so dumb. As long as it stays with the shepherd. It says, The I am that I am is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. What are you saying? Everything that I ever need, everything that, that 
it says not everything, I shall not be in need. It says, I shall not be in want. Now that's a difference, right? God will give you everything you need. Here it says he'll give you everything you want. You're everything I want. Isn't that a song? Don't fire me because I'm singing it. <laughs> but I just want to turn the mic off. Hurry, hurry. Right? He's like, I'm going to provide on a level that's God, the Bible says God's able to do a little lower than your expectations. <laughs> and you might, God's able to do what? Exceedingly abundantly above some of the things. All that we ask, get this, and ask in the right way. Ask or think. Now think about that. No pun intended. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Do you ever think about something? And you're, you're like, I was needing some new horse blankets and I remembered I had left some up at Tim's in, in a, in a um, bin. I gotta go up and get some stuff anyway. And, so I was like, I need to run up there and get this, but I'd really like to have some new blankets. And, I, and I'm just thinking this through my head. And then I get a text this morning, and one of my customers said, hey, you wouldn't happen to need some size 78 blankets, would you? And I was like, are they good? Yeah, they're almost brand new. We just don't need them. We were thinking of someone who might be able to use them, and we thought of you. Yes, I didn't ask God for blankets. In fact, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get more blankets. And you know what? God heard my thought. And he answered my prayer, my talking, my thought, before I even had a chance to ask. Whoa, wait a second. I forgot that I had to fast for 21 days like Daniel. <laughs> I, for, I forgot I had to scream and cry and have a prayer chain and have all this other stuff. He said, I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. He says, I am. He said, let the weak say, I am scrawny and weak. I'm Pee Wee Herman. No. No. Not, I like Pee Wee, by the way. And when I played football, uh, like um, some of those little, little scrawny guys um, would clean your clock because they could, they were just so fast, get under you. And like they were hard, they were the hardest to block because they could actually move, right? And so, so like I'm not, like if, if you're mighty in God's eyes, even if you look like Pee Wee Herman and think you're Pee Wee Herman, don't think that. I'm talking about it in the spirit, right? But God's got great things. We're big inside. We have strength. Let the weak say, I am strong. strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. And, whoa, wait a second. Who said, the, who said to say that? God. Jesus. Let the weak say, I am strong. Do you know if God's name, the Lord, is I am? If you say, I am, you're really invoking his name. The Bible says, that shall not take, take the name of the Lord in vain. You know, when you say, I am not enough. I'm a rotten scoundrel. You know what you're really saying? He's a scoundrel. You're made in his image. Ponder on that a second. Change the way you talk. Change the way you think. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in brown grass. <laughs> in mud. In green pastures. You know that Israel is in a water surplus for the first time in like forever? And, and do you know why? Because they have these desalination plants. They also recycle their wastewater and then they turn it into um, water for their fields and for their agriculture. And now they used to, when they used to have the Jordan River, like when they first got there, it was wide and it was big and it would flood every year and have be strong. Now, if you go there to get baptized, it's not nearly as big. Why? Because they've used all the water like, like God's word promised, and they've had to take water out of the Sea of Galilee. And so now, 
they're talking about putting water back into the Sea of Galilee and then selling water all over the Middle East to help other countries and they have a water surplus for the first time in history but now here we're reading about he makes me to lie down in green green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters what's he saying he knows like because this was arid this was desert like have you ever been there Man, or ever see pictures of it like like it, it's not like here right that's why you could tell Abraham, look at the sand. It's like, so will your seed be? Because you look here, it's like, I don't see no sand. All I see is grass. I guess I won't have any kids. <laughs> right? Look at the stars. Well, there's no stars here because all we see is clouds and rain. <laughs> so I don't know what he's talking about. We're in trouble, right? We've got to look beyond. Right? But it, it's different there because it was arid. It was desert. And they needed lead to a place where they could rest, a place where they could eat. And they'd graze off and then they would move on. They'd graze off and then, so they were continually trusting God all the time, trusting their shepherd all the time to lead them to the right place at the right time so that they could lay down and rest, so that they could drink water, so that they could have their provision and not be in want. That's a big deal when you think about it. And then it says this, He guides me in the paths of righteousness for my works. Yeah. For, for what? His name's for his name's sake? Mm -hmm. What's his name? I am. I am. I am that I am. It will say, we say God. God is Elohim. It's creator. God's like, call me pastor. More like what he does. It's who he is, but it's what he does. I am. That's his name. When Moses took his shoes off, burning bush, he said, take your shoes off. Right? I am. Who sent me? Tell him, I am that I am sent you. I am. And that's big. When we realize the power of his name, It'll change our lives. I still haven't grasped it even this much. And when I do, I am getting it. I am got it. My kids all, like some of our daughters, we were having Christmas dinner and they get these words, said re 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 resolutions. They pick a word for the next year and concentrate on that word. One of them was like renew or restore or something else. And, um, Anyway, I thought, well, I want a word for this year, but my word's two words, so I'm going to put apostrophe in it, and I'm just going to say, my word for this year is I'm, because if I go I am, it's two words, right? Well, is restore two words, too, because we're technically, no. so I guess, you know, does I'm count for one word? <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm, I am. Because I want to know, I am enough. I am righteous. I am whole. I am in him and he's in me. Focusing on being, not trying to become. Like me trying to become a guy. Come already a guy. I mean, trying to become a cowboy. Like, I still try to become a cowboy. I don't know if you ever become a cowboy. <laughs> like, although I did hurt my back last week. I was walking between a, I was walking from my truck to a horse, and I hurt my back. I was like, you know, I don't even have a good story. <laughs> like, most of the time, I was at the national finals and at the last obstacle, and I crashed and got bucked off and broke my collarbone and broke this. And, like, I got all these stories, but like, yeah, I was walking. <laughs> it's like, how do you even say that? I was like, they're going to take my cowboy card away, right? If I ever had one in the first place. And then it's like, well, and then I got to come up with a story. Yeah, I got kicked and stomped on, and that's why I'm hurt. And I was like, well, I lied about it, so they'll take my cowboy card away for that anyway, <laughs> right? But I am. That's what I want. I am. I want to be identified with him and in his image, not my, not my image of him 
but his image of who he is and know him and who he really is. And we're going to get eternity to do that. I tr trust me, this time here ain't nearly enough. But we're going to get eternity to know him. If you lived a thousand years, it wouldn't be enough. Methuselah didn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. Listen, even though I walk through, listen, the valley of the shadow of death. There's a key word here. Even though I walk through, there's a country song. It was, if you're going through hell, keep on going. Don't turn back. Uh, or something like, like you might get out before the devil even knows you're there. Right? Through. I'm going through. My grandma used to say, and my dad used to say, it's like, we're going to go to church and we're going to pray through. Not pray for, but we're going to pray through this. We're going to get through it, get through the other side. And that's what he's saying. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you're with me. Emmanuel. God with us. Christ in us. The hope of glory. Your rod and, sta and your staff, they come for me. Now, you know, like the rod and staff wasn't a sheep beater tool. What is that? So reach out, pull them up out of a spot or to help guide them. But it was never to beat them. They beat them like sheep were wimpy. <laughs> like I took animal science in school when I was doing my equine technology, and one of the things that we learned was four S's with sheep. Sick sheep seldom survive. You don't let sheep get sick. You keep them healthy. You maintain them. He ain't trying to beat up on sheep. He's trying to guide and to comfort and lead and protect. He's a good shepherd. He says, they comfort me, not they beat me. <laughs> you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, that word table in Hebrew is a word called shulhan. Now, Shul in Hebrew means place. Han is mercy or grace, where we get mercy or grace from. In Hebrew, Shulhan means a place of grace. Now think about that for a minute. You prepare a place of grace before me in the presence of my enemies. It means Everything might be coming down on you. Everything might look like it's going against you. He says in some things he works for the good of those. In all things, right? God's not, things aren't happening to us now. That's what this means is things are happening for us, right? Because he's making, preparing a table for us in the presence of our enemies. It makes me think of Meshibbeth. What is that? Meshibbeth? Can't, somehow I can't talk, <laughs> Right? He, he's Jonathan's son that was David, King David had a covenant with him. He said, I need to find someone I can bless. And when he was scurrying off, he was crippled and lame, and they were hiding him out. He's like, I got to find someone I, I can bless. And he's afraid for his life. But you know what God, you know what David does? He says, come bring him, bring him to the king's table and make a place for him. And he can have all the good that's at this table. And he had, he's able, you ever see a king's table? I know you watch any movies like Victorian age where they have like anything of grapes this big and, you know, coconut pie and chocolate pie and all this stuff, you know, anything you want. It's like right there and it's all on this table. It's all prepared for you. And he says, I will prepare a table for you because of grace and because of goodness and because of mercy and because I love you. You think about that. No matter what's coming around, no matter what it looks like, you can trust God. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You know why they anointed the sheep's heads with oil? You like bugs out of their ears. You know that? Like they pour it down. 
and it go down their ears and keep like them from having ear mites and have stuff on their head. That's what the oil was for. Well, me and my ears are pretty important. I'm going to listen to what he says. He's going to anoint my ears so that I can small hear from the inside out mm -hmm. and not just hear what I think in the physical. It says, and my cup overflows. Surely, Laverne. <laughs> no. Surely, goodness and love or mercy, depending on if you're in King James, will follow me some of the days of my life. All the days of my life. All the days of 2023. And I will dwell and beyond. And I will dwell in the house of the I am that I am for a few years forever do you know how long forever is forever it's a long time right so we can trust him so father we thank you we thank you that you love us we thank you that you're for us we thank you that you're encouraging people right now that that you're giving them strength and, and knowing that you're there with them in the hard times and that you're giving them healing and hope for the sicknesses but also for the provision that this is the greatest year that they've ever had bar none and blow their socks off in jesus name amen thank you for listening if you'd like to learn more about us check out our website at www dot silverlakebaptist dot o r g